Goose! What's going on YouTube? Today we're actually going to be starting a video series. So this is going to be a multiple set of episodes that we're going to be starting on. And the main goal of this episode is going to be showing you guys how easy it is to make a bossing mule once you already have a main set up. Um, and that will allow you to progress your main by farming extra money per week. My main goal here is going to be showing you guys the steps of how I'm doing it, the amount of time that it takes, and the amount of materials uh, taken away from your main that it's going to require to make a bossing mule. And the importance of doing this is every bossing mule that you end up making, at the minimum, is going to be making you about 800 mil extra a week, assuming you can do full CRA, which is going to be the goal of this video. If you do want to take your bossing mule a little bit further, um, and we might do this depending on how much traction this series gets, if you guys like it, stuff like that. But you can also upgrade him to the point where you're able to do a catchy and CPAP after that, and it will upgrade it to one bill a week. And then even further, you can go to the point where you're able to do Lotus and Damien. And at that point, you'll be getting a whopping 1.4 bill a week per character just by logging on to them for about 30 minutes, completing the bosses, calling it a day, and then back to your main. So let's start off with the reason of why I made a Dawn Warrior. When making a bossing mule, it is very, very important that you choose a very OP class at the time. That's because you want to make sure that this process is as quick as possible so you don't have to take as much time training or put as many resources in just for completing bosses on a character that you won't ever touch more than just doing a few bosses a week. By the time that this class gets nerfed, usually you'll have made way more than what you put into it in profit and not only that, the amount of resources that you can fund into this after the bills per week that you've made, you can make it a little bit stronger if it has any struggling doing the bosses. The other reason that I'm making a Dawn Warrior is because it requires a low amount of nodes to get the class going. This is very important because nodes are going to be the hardest resource to get for funding a bossing meal, especially if you want to get it to the point where it's able to do Lotus and Damien. So, Picking a class that only has one pair of nodes, like Dawnwire, is very important opposed to other classes that require sometimes two or even three pairs of nodes. The last thing that makes a good bossing mule is how easy the class is to train. Dawn Warrior feels very nice and fluid and you're able to clear maps very easily and you're able to one-shot mobs way easier than other classes with less funding. That being said, you can spend way less time training this character and you have a lot more time to train on your main. Now I'm gonna take you through the steps that I personally use to create a bossing mule starting from scratch. This character, I used a Hyper Burnator, uh, which is the day eight reward from your daily log, the green button in the bottom right. So I got up to 150 very quickly and after that, you can level pretty easily once you reach level 160, you'll have the highest level requirement for all of the party boss set bosses in the game. So what you can do is actually go into your boss UI and you can just form a party, ask people to do these daily bosses for you early on. The community here is very helpful. I sometimes jump in and help people as well. And I know every time that I do it, it takes less than five minutes and someone's there to help you out. Because I didn't have too much time to spend on this character, all that I did after hyper burning it to level 150 was just log on and do my daily coin capping for the class. While I was doing that, you can easily get done your 5 days of normal Rutabus. If you're going to be making a bossing mule, you should already have a main set up past the point of being able to do CRA and Lomian. The reason I say this is because at this point it is very easy to ask someone who also wants to set up a bossing mule or just fund a secondary main if they would trade Craw or Absolab. Once you have a full Fafnir set and maybe a few pieces of Absolab, you have a few good pieces of gear that are worth cubing and star forcing. For my bossing mules, I personally only cube my CRA and my weapon, secondary, and emblem. As far as star forcing goes, sometimes I'll go to 17, but usually in order to do just CRA, you shouldn't need to go past 15. Once you have most of your gear to epic or rare, all potential percent stat, and your weapon, emblem, and secondary, and your CRA to legendary, you're able to start doing your dailies in the Arcane River once you reach level 200 a lot easier. 
From level 200 plus, you can either grind on your mule to level it up, or I personally just do dailies and monster parks all the way up until 220. If you want to take your bossing mule to become a little bit stronger, you can go up to 235. The last important thing that I want to mention is when creating a bossing mule, you really want to take advantage of events. These events include double miracle time which allows you to cube and upgrade your gear at twice the rate, star forcing events which can either be a 5, 10, 15 or a 30% off event which this next upcoming Sunday will actually be the shining star force event which will be the 30% off plus the 5, 10, 15. Another important one to take advantage of is one that I was actually showing you guys off in the beginning of the video, which is actually going to be the 50% off ability changes event. And that's going to be on certain Sundays, usually about one a month to one every other month. The last type of event I want you to take note of is going to be the coin shop events. These usually have nodes and enhanced node stones in them, which can allow you to collect nodes without taking any that you farmed on your main. Now that we've set the path for this series, let's get into it. And to start it off, I'm just going to show you guys two days of my grinding period just by coin capping. As you can see, I got about three levels a day just by coin capping. And I was doing this all the way from level 150. It was really nice leveling this class as I had basically no star force and any gear other than boss set and no star force CRA. And I was able to one shot mob. As you can see here, the gear that I currently have isn't anything too special. It's a whole bunch of rare, one epic piece of equipment and a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't even have any potential. Everything that I currently have on also isn't Star Force whatsoever. All I've got is the three piece CRA, a few of the boss set, and then the tyrant cape and belt. Now what I'm going to do is actually go to my storage, going to grab out a few cubes. If you have other bossing mules or your main, you'll have a lot of these cubes stacking up over time. So hopefully if I get lucky here, I can actually upgrade my pieces of Penslar to Epic. My goal here is to have Penslar to Epic and ready to go. So the star forcing event this Sunday, I can get all of my craw to at least 15 stars. Right now I actually have a few extra pieces in here as you can see extra overalls, hats, and weapons uh, just in case they boom in the next event. And right now I'm actually going to reveal these potentials because I want to make sure that they have three lines. That way I don't have to waste any money using stamps or any of my backup stamps. So let's try to cube here. Let's see if I can actually get lucky. Sweet. Finally. All right, let's try the second one now. And boom, easy as that. The next thing that I wanna do in order to get ready for my Shining Star Force event is actually gonna be starting on my Absolab. Luckily in this video, I was actually very thankful enough to have a streamer tree, um, Infinis, definitely not an Adele main. He actually does boss carries all the time for you guys, so I'll drop his Twitch link in the description below. I just wanna give a great thank you to him. I have a few weeks of weekly crystals from the Scrapyard and Dark World tree saved up. So if I don't get anything, I'll still be able to get my Absolab. So hopefully I can get a few crystals from that. But maybe if we're lucky enough, we can actually get some boxes on this trip. The one thing that I will mention about getting carried in this game is make sure to do at least what you can. For example, I kept throwing on True Sight because I'm a Dawn Warrior and Binding when he asked. Alrighty, now for the good part. Let's see if we can actually get anything here. And not a Chibata. At least we got those crystals though, because as I said, I do have those weekly saved up, so I will be able to make a few Absolute pieces out of that. So I was actually able to get four Lotus cores from that run. So that will be at least two set of Abso that I'll be able to Star Force for this upcoming event. I'll actually be able to get enough cores regardless from this hard Damien run in order to at least build the shoulders. So if I'm actually lucky enough and get an armor and a weapon box from this boss, I'll actually be able to be full five set just off of one week of hard Lomian. Honestly guys, I am super excited for this. Getting Abso on this character is gonna be a blast. I just feel like this class is so strong already on its own just in terms of base stats that I am over the moon about to see uh, what this will be able to do in terms of how easy I'll be able to get Craw done. 
the best part is also is I haven't even touched fifth job yet and I'm already enjoying this class. The one downside is I don't know how I feel about the lunar phase in this, but I do know from the few clips that I have seen about Dawn Warrior, I know that I'm gonna get some super cool abilities here in a minute. I'm pretty sure that these are gonna be also extremely good burst abilities, so it's gonna make doing CRA super easy. This is pretty important when considering uh, who you wanna make a bossing mule, because the better burst you have, if you're able to do it in one bind, you won't have to spend as much money on buff freezes for this character. Alrighty, we are back to the juicy part of all bossing again. Let's see if There's actually no way I just got a weapon box from Hard Damien. That is super exciting and it's gonna make leveling on this character so much easier now. I'm actually really happy with that and I get to try it just out in time for me to finish my level 200 grind. So here are my last few levels at Fez 2. It is such a nice feeling knowing that you only have to level the 199 now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when you reach level 199, you can actually just start the Haven, a new home quest line, and it'll actually just pump you up to level 200. And that's actually nothing more than just a few quests that you have to do. It's just a few talking, kill four mobs, and there you are, level 200. So that about wraps it up for this video. We got to level 200, so in the next video, we'll start diving into a little bit of the V Matrix, and this coming Sunday, I'll have a Star Forcing event as well, so you guys will be able to see the progress on that. Next week, as far as getting my fifth piece of Abso, I'll probably just trade a normal Lomian because that's all I'll really need in order to get my last piece of Abso. I just want to give you guys a giant thanks for all of you who stuck around to the end of the video. If you guys like this concept and want to see more of this series in the future or content related to this, don't be afraid to like and subscribe. It really lets me know that you guys like this type of content. And as always, please come around for the next video and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.